Hi everyone, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. How are you? Welcome all of you to our physical week of Taurus. So apparently yesterday I did something that I don't like to do. Um, of what I feel ashamed of. Um, <laughs> but anyway, um, it happened, many people saw it, so it doesn't matter. Take a breath, take a deep breath, and keep going on with my life. As I told you to begin this week, I remind you that um, in the beginning of this month, I told you that three different energies will be sharing with us this, um, this uh, month, and um, they are the manifestors of matter, of reality according to um, to the Egyptian tradition. And um, of course, for this week, we have our great creator, Ptah. And before I explain what the god Ptah means, um, I would like to remind you that in my philosophy of life, I don't believe in gods. I, I When I speak about gods, it's not that I believe that there are gods. It's that I call gods to the different attributes of the existence of the universe. Hmm? Okay. So this is an idea. It's not exactly like this, but this is like how, like kind of a of an idea. Okay. So let's look into this kind of like that. So in order to see it in this way, Ra is like the divine that creates the concept of the divines called the Nun, which you can divide in air and water, air and water, that creates earth and skies, get and Nut, creates the earth and sky, and they create Ptah. Ptah is the creator of all the things on earth, which divides itself into many pieces, into many pieces, which are the gods of the pantheon of Egypt. At the moment that, at the same time that the other, the air, the water, Nun, Ra, they are like these um, concepts of creation, big, big pictures of the creation. So Pta is the one that creates the parts of the creation. Okay, every part from the gods that will create until all the realms of reality of nature hmm? so ra is not the creator ra is the divine consciousness okay that it starts to be the creator incarnated in the concept of pta hmm? so when you hear about pta you will listen that he was the god of creation that he was the god of the architects he was the god of um, of um, um, of the artisans, but also you will listen that he was the god of darkness, and this is something that people maybe can say, "Oh my god, this is this is perhaps the 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 god of darkness, so he was evil." No, it's not that. We can relate this god, Pta, the god of. Uh, with the god that in Greece they call Hephaestus, and um, the Romans call Vulcano. This, um, these gods, uh, the same one, were uh, usually were related to a blacksmith from hell. He was the one that was working uh, with a junk, with um, um, uh, creating swords and tools and so on. So related to the fire, related to lava, related to to the inner world, because the inner world was the creation of all the things that are. Hmm? So why is related with darkness? Because Ra is the aspect of divinity, which is impossible to touch, intangible. It's the one that is the essence, the consciousness, the light, the awareness. So it's impossible to touch, to perceive. And when this being materializes itself, it creates matter, physical, that projects shadows. 
So the physical aspect of the divine creates darkness, creates shadows. So this is why from the point of view of ancient civilizations, Ptah was not the evil god. It was the god of the manifestation. And that's why they call it darkness, because it was the one that created things that give shadows, that produce shadows. Okay? So you get the idea? Perfect. So this god, Ptah, is the one that materialized the concept of the divinity of, of the of the subtle planes and brings it into materialization so this means that all the concepts that were before around in the eternity now are going to be physical they will have a structure and of course in order to do that itself had to divide into different attributes to put their attributes outside and materialize them with a shadow with a light itself so that's how it creates everything that we have in our reality. So this brings us that the creator, Pta, manifests its attribute in the shape of, for example, sexuality, love, intelligence, uh, communication, uh, music, every one of the arts. So basically, all these kind of manifestations will be called gods or goddess, a divinity. But they are attributes hmm, of the entire world. So if we pay attention to how this works, it will be the system of fractalization. So the main god of creation divides into two other gods, one feminine, one masculine, and they divide in other two. So they create four, and these four, eight, and this age 16, and so on, starts to fractalize constantly, once again, once again. So the attributes that the main god had split into billions of attributes in every one of the living beings. So this means that each one of us has the same attributes as the main creator, Pta, that we are gonna pass through to the next generations. Let's understand this picture. What are attributes? Because we say humans has attributes. What are the human attributes? We can think about love, wisdom, uh, music, uh, being a good person. Those could be different attributes of a person. But what are the basements of attributes? Attributes basically are emotions. When you go within, you understand that everything that you are um, doing is an impulse that comes from emotion. And what is an emotion? It's an energy moved by hormones in our body, from where the hormones come from, from the glands, from organs. So the organs are creating the impulse for our attributes. And what are the organs? Are conjunctions of molecules, cells, molecules, that are atoms that interact energy that works through vibration. So you see from where it comes from. The whole universe has created through vibration and energy the organs that are the middle point to create the attributes into the matter, to manifest the attributes into the matter. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so what we have here, uh, all the lights, sorry. Um, what we have here is the path that it takes for us to awaken the attributes that we call human attributes. So we have here the path of vibration. Vibration creates energy. Then the atoms, the atoms produce cells. The cells create organisms connected to what we call chakra. And then the organ produces harmony, that produces emotion, that creates impulses, that awakens attributes. Okay? So in order to have attributes, the universe has created this whole path in which the organs materialize the attributes. The attributes would be just mental concepts in the universe 
if they are not going through all this process until materialize themselves. So the organs itself would be um, the, when we speak about materialization, uh, materializing the divine into the matter, the ethereal into the physical, what we have is that chakra and organ, they join together to create like a passage, like a, um, like a process that, uh, that enables the universe to manifest the divinity into the matter. Mm -hmm. So Pta, as a concept, he found a way in which he could download the divine into the physical. Mm -hmm. So this makes us understand that not only in our bodies, but in the entire creation, there are spots from where all the subtle planes of reality can be downloaded in a conjunction towards the matter in the physical world. Okay, places where you can download heaven on earth. In our bodies, we have the glands, the endocrine system as a way to open the doors. Okay, from the subtle to the physical. But in the earth, we have many represented in mountains, in islands, in lakes. Those places is what we call nodes. The nodes of a planet, the nodes of a body, are places where the energy goes down in a spiral and goes up in a spiral, finding together in the center, creating a node of energy. So these are perfect places to where the heaven can go down into the earth and places where the earth can go up into the heaven. The way in which ancient people could understand where are those places, we're following the birds. The birds observing the skies, the clouds and everything, they were like trying to picture the images of what this um, these people could, uh, this, uh, these gods could download from heaven. So the birds were the first ones and notice that portal. How? Because they were in circles. So they were following the birds flying in circles. And if the birds repeat that going very high and going down in the same spot once and again, once and again, what they could see is that the birds were telling you where are a portal to the gods, to the heaven. So that's why the there were some priests that were just observing birds. Observing birds in Latin, you might say, avis avis spictum. Avis spictum. That is the origin of the word auspice. Okay? Avis spictum, to watch birds. Auspice. How, how do you say in English? I, was, I don't know the pronunciation. I was pissed. I was vicious. I was when someone gives money to someone to make him keep doing what that person is doing. People used to say that um, used to auspicious. The people that auspice someone um, like a sponsorship, let's say in English. Um, it's because that person sees sees that something is good in the future, that that thing could be good eventually. Okay, so that's the, the word. Entonces esta, esta palabra de auspicio también está relacionada a auspiciar el futuro. So this word auspicious is the one that is related to know the future, to know what is going to happen. A signal. So what these priests would do, they would follow the place where the birds were flying and there in those places, they would cut the trees, cut the mountain, prepare the, the, the terrain so they could, hit, they could have a clear uh, space so they could see and communicate and receive the, 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 the messages of the divine straight from the heaven.
this place were called what was called Temlo. That means place made by cuts, cuts of trees or cuts of stones. So the reason why we add a B in the center is by pronunciation, because when you say many times Temlo, 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 a P appears immediately. This is how we get the word temple. As you see here, this is how the word temple starts. Temple is not about a construction. A temple is basically a space that was open so the messages from heaven can be downloaded into the ground. So eventually in those sacred places, the priests and priestess started to use the feathers the feathers of the birds, the condors, the eagle, the hawk, the ravens, the quetzal, um, vultures, all of them. They started to use all these um, feathers to decorate themselves because it was the wisdom. The feathers were the wisdom of these portals. They were bringing the messages. So that's why eventually when they discovered the ink, they started to write with the feathers because the knowledge of the divine came from the heavens through the feathers. You see how it came, the history of the feathers. So eventually the priests and priestesses started to stay in those, in those spots. So people start to create a house for the priest to live there so they could have a place to speak and communicate with the divines. And that's what we call a temple today. The house where the priests and priestesses could gather with the divine. So eventually, with the pass of time, the temples became very important too because the construction of the temples were the incarnation of the divinity. The shape of the temples, the intention that they had, the ways in which they had to be built this, the inscriptions on it, the stones that were used, everything was downloading what the gods were representing, and suddenly the temples itself became holy. What we got about this connection with the divine is contemplation. Contemplation comes from the word temple, is the action that we take all together to go into that temple to observe the skies, to contemplate. Contemplate is, means to get together to watch the skies, to go to a spot where you can contemplate the skies. Eventually, a lot of people stopped watching to the skies to receive the message, and they started to close their eyes in the shadows of the temple to see within, to contemplate in the inside. This takes us to meditation. So the temple, it's not exactly a place where you go and pray or meditate. It's a place in which you can contemplate from the middle point, both sides, one side here, the other side there. We relate temples today with the places where you can go and there is a construction. But actually, as we are looking now, as we are understanding now, a temple is a place of contemplation. It's not a place that is built. There are many temples, natural temples, as I said, in islands, in mountains, in lakes, in trees, and places that we call ethereal temples, that they are in other dimensions. So it doesn't mean that there is a temple with the shape of a human culture. It doesn't mean that there is a temple of crystals or whatever. It means that it's a place of contemplation. It means there is a place where you can go and observe outside and within. So now that we know what a temple is, remember that there are temples of many kinds, but all of them are to connect heaven and earth by observation, contemplation. So a temple is a place that was built to, um, to seek a spot to contemplate something so it doesn't matter the religion it can be christian temple as a church it can be a synagogue 
for the Jews. It can be a mosque for the Muslim, a temple of Hinduism, Buddhism. It doesn't matter because all of them were built with one intention, which is to contemplate, to observe the within between heaven and earth. So it doesn't matter in which one you go if you know this. Important to know that a house cannot be a temple unless the house was built and used mostly for contemplation. In a house, you do all your daily stuff. You do many things. It's not only about contemplation. The places, maybe in your house, you can have a room that is only for that, for contemplation. So that could be a temple or maybe the tree, some tree in, in the garden. Hmm? The um, idea of the, of the temple is basically contemplation, to go within, to observe. So there are places that were precisely done for that or with intention of just be that. Hmm? So <clears throat> um, a place that was done for that is uh, perfect to be a temple. So now we can understand that during our daily life, being unaware and conscious, our body is the body. But when we start to work with a consciousness to become aware, our body becomes a temple. And the body becomes a temple not because within we have the soul. It becomes a temple because we contemplate ourselves, attention to what we need or what we are. So this is why along this path in this next week, we will go through all the uh, systems of our body to try to understand each part of it, each temple that we have within, in order to understand, to contemplate how every organ, every system in our body can be a door between the divinity and the matter and the matter towards divinity. Okay, so as the last thing in honor to Ptah, remind you what Egypt means. So, name of Egypt, Had Ka Ptah, Had Ka Ptah, Had is house, home as in hat, hat hur. Ha, meaning spirit, pta, the creator, the house of the spirit of creation. That's the name of Egypt, that the Greek people were not able to say hat kapta, and they said Egyptos, Egyptos, Egypt. So here we are at the house of the spirit of creation. And, um, and by its body, the Nile, it created the it created the, the path of initiation in every temple. Um, of course, e Egypt was the the ancient name uh, that we have still, but in Egyptian, uh, sorry, in, in Egypt, the country is called Misr. Misr is in, in Arab language, okay? In Arab language, they call it Misr. Misr means um, um, fortress, okay? The place, construction, fortress. Mm -hmm. So Misr. Let's go to information today. So speaking about the spirit of creation, Ka, Today, the sound is ka, precisely, which is the word for spirits. So a detail of saying ka, because it's not, it's not ka. It's not ka or ha, it's ka. The word ka, you have to heat the, um, the palate, okay? Very deep behind. Um, that, that's, that's how you say it properly. Ka. Why? Because in the ancient uh, language, when, when, what you had to do uh, with this was to hitting the bone where is touching the, um, the hypothesis land. Okay, 
so which is the the crown chakra so when you say ka you are moving that that gland you are like heating that that gland calling the spirit okay so um that's why to know the difference it's not ka it's ka okay the statement for today is i am a channel between spirits the code for today is the circulatory system another one of the fundamental systems of the body is the one in charge of the distribution of nutrients minerals and chemical elements like oxygen to all the organs and corners of the body cells need the chemical basis for life and it and is through the circulatory system that this reach them to be absorbed the heart is in its center that distributes through water and the red globules blood the red cells um blood all the components among them the oxygen is fundamental and thus and thus it and thus it through a vein a vein and artery system it's the projection of the flow and pulse of the universe space-time sit comfortable close your eyes and concentrate in your breathing body I inhabit. can perceive the air, the oxygen coming in my nose, going to my lungs, feeling how it goes to the heart, sent along the entire body, through the veins, in the blood, to every organ. As I become aware of deep breath, every time deeper, I start to feel how the breathing reorganizes my body. I feel the bones, the muscles, and I start to move them, to stretch the whole body. Every joint, Yawning. Moving every part of it. Massaging, caressing. I move every joint from my feet to my head. Juego con el cuerpo. Me permito sentirlo, reconocerlo. En cada rincón siento el tacto donde me produce placer. I touch the entire body, feeling each part of it and becoming aware of each corner of it, perceiving which touch and which part produces pleasure in me and which ones produce fear and comfortable emotions, sensations. <clears throat> I'm 
I allow myself to touch every part of the body as if I am touching the body of the person I am in love with. I carry soft my face, the eyes and circles, nose, the lips. the ears, the hair. I try to perceive touching every corner, every center of my body. Which part of it makes me feel comfortable? And which ones I feel ashamed of? <clears throat> I try to recognize why I feel ashamed or uncomfortable with some parts of my body. try to move in circles every joint from my fingers and hands to the wrist, my elbows, my shoulders, my neck, the jaw, the spine, like if it is a snake in waves. Knees, ankles, and circle. And slowly, each one at its own time, starts to relax your body letting all the weight fall down, the weight of the legs, the arms and the head. Let the jaw fall down, even if I need to let my mouth open, I let it fall down with all the weight. I let my shoulders fall down. And I let all my body lay down on the surface that I find myself in. As I feel this relax, all the body already known and connected with the next deep breath, I can perceive all the spiritual world, how it comes within me from the back, in every joint, in every organ, as I take the breath, as I inhale the air and goes through me going out in front of my body 
ahead in every exhalation breathe out as I breathe all the spiritual world gets inside of me from the back in every cell and goes out of me in front through every cell I recognize myself now as the point of inflection where everything connects, where I can contemplate myself and all what I am and what I, and what I am going to be. I am the portal through where I get in to know myself. So inside, I can know the universe. I am the temple of spirit. I am, and I call it. I am the channel between spirits. I am the channel between spirits. I am the channel between spirits. I have the temple in me and I contemplate it. I have I have, I have. Take a deep breath and each one at its own time. Come back here and now, caressing and stretching your body. So for those who are following the task of this month, you take this energy, put it into the water and put it in the seeds that we have sowed. Thank you everybody for being here another day as always. And see you tomorrow at the same time.